And one of the first speaker will be uh, uh, will be Nigel from RailsBank, CEO and founder uh, and, and founder of RailsBank, and we will discuss with him about how we can really revit revitalize the core of banking with uh, the new, let's say, bank as a, banking as a service stack. Hello, Nigel. How are you? Hey, pleased to meet you, and thanks for the invitation. Yeah, thank you very much. You were uh, there last year with a great uh, uh, keynote talk about really how we can revitalize the core of banking. And yesterday, a lot of speakers actually talk about that. So maybe can you just to introduce uh, the stage? Can you tell a little bit more about you, uh, what uh, what RailsBank does, and what do you do at RailsBank? And uh, I guess we can start the discussion. Sure, well, at RailsBank, uh, uh, what we <clears throat> have observed is. Uh, consumers don't buy car loans, they buy cars. And therefore, uh, if you look at the world in that way, if we can enable our customers, say uh, car dealerships, car companies, uh, to embed and give them the tools and expertise to embed uh, the loan in the car buying experience, rather than have to go to a third party lender, go to your bank, or drop out into lots of paperwork in the dealership, and so you can buy a car in 90 seconds online, which I think Auto One do in, in Germany. Uh, that is what we do. We provide the embedded finance tools to deliver embedded finance experiences in an overall customer experience. And all our tools are our APIs. And hence probably why we're here at API Days today. So those that is what we do. So uh, say, uh, uh, the classic example would be uh, Uber. Nobody thinks of Uber being an embedded uh, finance company, but uh, they are. Because when before Uber, when you got out of the cab, uh, you had to check whether the cab would take a debit card or credit card or take cash. Or if they did have cash, did they have enough uh, change to give to you? And so your, your experience of exiting the cab was stressful. With, uh, with Uber, the, the cab exit experience is you just get out and all the finance happens in the background. And next thing you get is a pop-up saying, rate the driver. And so that's uh, how you can, that's what we do. We provide all the tools to do that embedding of a financial experience into an overall consumer experience. And that's what Wales Bank does. Yeah, to explain a little bit more before we dive more into the, the concept and the content, uh, uh, can you tell a little bit more about, uh, you know, Rails Bank, where do you operate? You, you know, to really understand where do you speak from, like, you know, from your sure. role, what you see. We're, we're live in North America, uh, UK and Europe, across UK and Europe, and Southeast Asia. And so we, we take a global perspective of, of uh, where uh, embedded finance can actually help uh, the consumer relationship for our customers and uh, the consumer uh, engagement with our customers. So we have, we're, we're 457 people, uh, and uh, we have uh, somewhat just... Uh, between just over 7.6 million consumers connected up to us. So I think we've got a, a great, probably one of the few people in the world have a very global perspective of how embedded finance works. I think we're, we're also by, by, uh, by a long way the largest in Europe as well. Yeah, it's very it's really important for all attendees to understand how wide is your vision of, of the topic. So you were mentioning Uber, you were mentioning uh, uh, the fact that they are an embedded finance company. Does that mean that no finance and banking is not the monopoly of banks anymore as long as you have the core banking as a service you can also be a embedded finance provider sure the uh, uh it's a very good observation uh Madi. the what uh we believe in and we think is a is, is a just a, a macro trend is uh finance will be delivered by brands uh, and not banks uh, to the consumer and because the uh, because a very simple thing is the way banking is set up is you have to go to the bank to do something, whether the bank is a fintech bank or a traditional high street bank. And so if you're on a car loan, you've got to go to the bank. Uh, whereas uh, we see it, if you put finance around the consumer at the relevant point where they need that finance, for example, when you need finance for exiting the cab uh, for the Uber, when you need finance for buying the car, all those things are relevant at the point in time that the consumer needs uh, those financial capabilities and those financial experiences. And so the best people to deliver those are brands, uh, retailers, et cetera, because they have the consumer at the point in time they actually need to use a financial product or financial services uh, or use money, basically. 
And so we see that's that's a general trend. Uh, you look at Apple, uh, the Apple credit card, that's now uh, sort of emblazoned into a lot of the Apple consumer experiences. Uh, but it's relevant at the time when the consumer actually needs credit or needs uh, needs a payment. So that's that's how we look at the world. It's it's now uh, putting finance around the consumer rather than forcing the consumer to come to the bank. That's a fundamental shift. Now banks uh, will still remain the core of the financial system because what they are is extremely good at uh, managing risk and warehousing risk and being places of safety. And so I think the role of the bank will change to be a more balance sheet warehouse uh, with the distribution and engagement and the relevant financial experience at the point of time the consumer needs it at that, part, that, that, that exact moment. And so uh, I think the best example of this is Goldman uh, with Marcus and I think SEB with SEBX as well. Uh, they're making the bank balance sheet available via APIs. They've said we don't need to talk to the consumer Apple, you talk to the consumer because you know when finance is relevant for the consumer and you know how to get to consumers and you've got millions of them. And so that's that type of relation and you can wrap the experience around the consumer, the embedded finance experience around the consumer. So that is how we think the, 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 the future looks. Uh, we think banks are still, uh, uh, will definitely be part of it and a, a meaningful part of it. And the parallel would probably be the music industry where uh, prior the iTunes being been launched and the the iTunes essentially the mp3s and mp3 players been around for a good number of years uh, until Apple solved the industry problem which is performing rights and had a really nice new product called the iPod and they had a track at 99 cents and as soon as that launched out radically the change in the industry where the uh, uh, the the uh, uh, the, 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 uh, I've, forgotten my, I've forgotten the name of the, uh, the parts of the industry. The record labels, that's it. The record labels were like the banks. They controlled the industry. And the record labels now are still part of the industry. They're, they're like custodians of back catalogs, etc. But the industry has fundamentally shifted. And people, uh, things like SongCloud, uh, even GarageBand, uh, YouTube, uh, uh, Spotify, and everything has been allowed to uh, to uh, the cons the actual artist to collect connect directly with the consumer, and they rapidly experience the music when a consumer, not via the record label, and so that's the same sort of parallel we see as the shift in the in the financial services industry over the next five to ten years, and we're seeing it happen now. Yep, definitely. Uh, uh, that was a question that has been addressed yesterday: is that why Apple? is not a bank yet, why Amazon is not a bank yet, why Google is not a bank yet, well, all the fam guys that everybody say they could be a bank tomorrow are not banks yet. And um, do you have a, they, they could be, they have a hundred of millions of user base this, with Amazon business. They know exactly when they need some money, when they need, do you know why they are not banks? Yeah. So yeah. very, very good. There's very good. <laughs> I mean, it's an observation loads of people make. They've got the consumers. And so they've solved the, the customer acquisition issue, they've solved the relationship issue, they've solved the engagement issue because they talk to these consumers either digitally or in, in store at the, uh, uh, on mass. So they deeply know their consumer. Uh, banks really, really don't. Uh, and they also understand their consumer's wallet share and all the other pieces you need to make credit decisions and, and the sorts of stuff. Uh, why don't come a bank? So, when you're a bank, you've got this thing called a balance sheet. And if you look at the fundamentals of balance sheet, it's, it's fundamental banking. It's taking a deposit, which is a call of liability, and creating assets, which are loans, and then making sure what's called asset liability management means uh, you can make service all your loans and you don't run out of capital. And so $1 of deposit can actually be uh, converted into $4 of, of loans. And that's, that's what the regulation allows banks to do. And so managing a balance sheet uh, that way is fundamentally different than managing a corporate balance sheet. And so there's people who are very good at it, people like Goldman Sachs, people like Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, JP Morgan, Barclays. And so if I was sitting there in, in, at Amazon or at, uh, at Google or any of these places, I would do what I'm really good at and I'd let a partner do what they're very, very good at. So with Google and others, they're, they're not going to be banks because why should they get into all the regulation piece 
and try and scale banking throughout the world because it's a pretty much impossible task. There's only a few people have ever done it uh, because of the uh, A, the capital requirements, B, all the regulatory uh, things all around the world, et cetera. And so by, by taking this approach and partnering and sitting on, say, say on top of something like Rails Bank, where we've solved all the local banking issues and everything, so you've got one single API, just like AWS has done for, uh, for data centers. Uh, that's what we believe the future is, and they're not going to the banking because it just doesn't make economic sense, one. And number two is it's, uh, it's a real pain to run f uh, financial operations and regulation. And that's our vision is actually they'll end up running on top of us at Rails Bank on a global basis. Yep, yeah, and uh, the question is like, why don't they just acquire a bank who already knows the job? They have the cash to do it, but you say it's mostly for regulation and they don't want to dive into that. It's a full job. And the third thing, um, uh, like maybe maybe bank doesn't earn enough money. <laughs> you know, they're not profitable enough for this type type of companies. Mm -hmm. uh, and and also there is the fact that uh, I, I would love to your your comment on this. But um, uh, let, let's say that um, you know, like banks have, you know, they're. They have this. They have the license. They have the right to do credit, to do loan, to do mortgage. But my main question is here: Are, are the fam guys just taking the low-hanging fruits, all the value because they own the customer, and let the hard work to banks? Uh, essentially, yes. Uh, in terms of con uh, basic consumer finance, uh, because uh, if you look at the, the fundamental economics of, say, G10 banks, the the acquisition cost of a new customer is about three hundred and fifty dollars, and the lifetime value ex lending is about two fifty dollars. Therefore, and it costs you about uh, fifteen twenty five bucks a month to operate uh, a current account. Uh, so the economic, and if you basically you, you lose over the lifetime value of the cust lifetime, so it's three to four lifetime, you're losing about thousand bucks per customer. Uh, so why engage with them if you're just hoping that some of those convert into loans and you can upsell uh, loans, insurance, and, and other product, which are the, the margin products in banking. Uh, whereas uh, Apple and all, all these other people don't have the CAC cost. There's, a slight, there's an upsell conversion cost. And so the, the unit economics fundamentally look better for the bank because they don't have the they don't have the uh, the operation cost because it's massively lowered because it's on a scale thing, it's on markets. Uh, traditional core banking is going to have a real problem. That's why some of them people haven't competed with markets because they can't get the operating cost of a of a current account down enough. And so they've got to, if they focus on reducing the cost of running a current account, able to provide APIs into the balance sheet, so uh, so Google and others can can basically place loans to them. At 10 bucks acquisition as opposed to 350 bucks acquisition, you've got uh, the economics and unit economics working. And for example, on, on Rails Bank, I think it's about 10 cents a month is the unit cost of operating a current account compared to 15 bucks a month, 15 to uh, 20, uh, 25 bucks a month for a, a G10 bank. So these are the things where there's a shift. If they, if they can shift the cost base, uh, reduce the acquisition costs, and do what they're good at, they actually make more money. And they open up financial inclusion to. Because people who previously were totally uneconomic because they're, they're a certain uh, part of society, uh, if the economics work for these people, banks will bank them. At the moment, they don't bank them because the economics just don't work and banks aren't a charity. So I think you can create a, a much better financial system, a much more inclusive society by changing the economics of it. And the same happened in the music industry. It was on its knees prior to the iTunes and the, the, uh, the, 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 iTunes and the, and the iPod. Uh, now it's massively thriving, and artists are making money as well. But beforehand, they they were really screwed by the labels. So it's a it's a, a new world of looking at it, and I think some of the old world may go bust. Uh, for example, there's over banking in the states. There's about six thousand community banks and credit unions in the states. When you probably need uh, a twenty percent of those, for example, because the economics don't work and the subscale balance sheets and things. And there's a few other uh, examples like that. So that's that's how we see it. It's an economics thing that uh, that drives everything. And if ec economics work, technology is something that implements economics. Yep. Yeah, no. And and in 1994, I think Bill Gates said, "We need banking. We don't need banks." Uh, you know, yes. uh, you know at, at the point, it's, he has been really right on operating system and Windows and stuff like that. He he has been wrong on other stuff, and he at some point he when he said that banks will disappear, uh, you know, he was 
they're still there but i agree with you like there is something happening and there will be some merger or some consolidation of, of the market my, my question is here when you uh, with rails bank when you come with this banking as a service offer this banking core banking bricks uh, you know like um, uh, it you were understood that when you talk to a car dealer or someone who owned the customer experience, he can be embed finance directly in his customer experience. Yep. When you talk to banks, what's what's happening? Or how do they see you? Do they see you as a as a competitor or a threat or a way to revitalize also their core banking? Uh, at the moment, we, we don't actually sell to banks uh, at all. And someone comes and say, "Can we can we operate on your platform?" And we politely say no. Uh, and so I think that whether they see us as a competitor, yes, I don't know. I think they see us as an annoyance. Uh, but when uh, I'm sure people at data centers saw AWS as an annoyance when it came out, and then does anybody use data centers anymore? Uh, no, they use uh, AWS, Google Cloud, uh, and others, even Azure. So uh, are, are we, we're building something that's actually has more scale than, than, than most banks have uh, themselves with scale faster with the consumers we have uh, connected up. And we power other people to, to, to uh, give Bill Gates' uh, vision. Uh, there's, we empower 325, I think, cus uh, customers to do banking uh, without having banks. So it's uh, so we, yes. We're, at the moment, we're probably just an annoyance and and probably uh, viewed as an experiment going on in 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 the lab rather than actually uh, serious. But we are very 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 serious. Yeah. Now and and yeah. because we see many banking as a service sometimes who sell to banks in in the fact that banks wants to be on your platform means that they have issues to evolve really fast as you as you are. So they want to embed you, yes. <laughs> right? To try to, but, to sell but, you. So who embeds who? So it's basically, I mean, software vendors will help banks develop their own bank as a service. We're a full stack, vertically integrated all the way from the central bank to the consumer. So there's no legacy in there. And, and hence, uh, that's why we, we can compete directly with them, because we, we control all our economics. Most of their BAS vendors uh, are either software on top of existing legacy, or there's pure software that's powering a bank. And inheriting all the legacy uh, risk, the legacy compliance, the legacy, all the other pieces that uh, you do, you do that. So, it's, but also, one of the fundamental things we believe in is don't compete with your customers. And so, most banks have consumer banking, SME banking, and then they're powering through so a banking and service platform. People who do consumer banking and SME banking fighting for exactly the same consumer. And ergo, that's a massive channel conflict. And some ways you can, some ways and strategies to manage it. But personally, if I was building a business or I was running, uh, say, Nike or something, and, and I've got a bank who competes directly with me for the same consumer, uh, why would I use them? Uh, because uh, I, as Nike, own the consumer more than the bank does. And I have a much better experience with the consumer than the bank does. I have a daily experience, and they love Nike. And all banks throughout the world have probably the lowest NPS scores of any industry, hence why people don't really switch. Uh, even though it's free to switch in the UK, hardly anybody switches because of the, uh, the low NPS score and one is the same as the low NPS score of the other. And, and so that's, that's a sort of dynamic that's emerging it. But the NPS score of Nike is huge uh, because of the engagement they do and they, they, they do great shoes <laughs> and hats and things. <laughs> yeah, we see some questions coming, so don't hesitate at least if you have any questions to add, I will ask them in the in a in few minutes. Um, last question for me before uh, the audience question. Um, so just, okay, Rails Bank is, is growing, Rails Bank is providing banking as a service to more and more companies. What's the end goal? At some point, my question is, will I, will be, uh, will I be able to have let's say my family bank, you know, I have my bank of 50 users, which are my family, I own the license, I own the core banking, I pay license as a service, you know, and I pay core banking as a service per user, will we reach that point? Or yes. do you see a, an average? Yeah, you see that? Yeah, we're, we're, that's what people do rent off us. They rent our license, they rent our operations, they rent our technology, subscribe to it as a subscription economy. And uh, we're, that's what we do. And so we see in the future will just be like AWS. You switch on the services for you to deliver uh, financial products rather than just banking uh, that are relevant to your consumers at the point in time, bless you, at the point of time when uh, the consumer needs it. So we, we, we aspire to be like AWS was to Netflix, and Netflix couldn't exist without AWS. Uh, and 
And uh, AWS learned a lot about how to do global streaming and a, a high growth company like Netflix, because it was a CDs stuffed in envelopes beforehand. And uh, we, we had the same, same aspirations to be like a financial layer of the internet uh, that anybody can subscribe to as easily as AWS. Yeah, and then uh, Stripe made a, a study three years ago about the cost of running a digital business. They were saying it was three million pounds in, in 2000. And now with cloud and with everything as a service, the cost to start, to start an online yes. business is in the thousands of dollars. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, I, I went through that myself in the two previous companies I founded. Uh, that uh, When we founded Currency Cloud back in 2007, uh, that we had to get data center, we had to get buyer and hardware, and all that type, manage it, or find someone to manage it for us. And then AWS came out and said it was like uh, literally a tenth of the cost and better service and 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 higher uptime and everything. So that fundamentally changed and that, that's our aspiration for uh, for the financial services industry. And so in 10 years with AWS, with Rails Bank, how much it will be to open a bank? Uh, I, I can imagine that opening a financial services rather than opening a, a bank or providing banking like services, I would I would aspire that it cost you 50 to 100 grand to set up. That would be an aspiration on that. Yeah, that's affordable, right? That's, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's affordable to enter the business uh, for the the, the, the the few minutes we have. And again, if you have one point you want to specifically to share, we have a question about like, uh, why are financial regulators so slow to understand data and identity, um, uh, to understand data and identity are core to value exchanges in the post-cash era? Yeah, it's, uh, remember that regulators are generally run by lawyers. Uh, and if you look at the leak, if you go into any legal practice and look at the technology used, uh, you'd see probably the, the issue that no lawyers are digital mindset uh, people. And so the, because uh, I totally subscribe to that, data is everything. And, and data and identity uh, is, is, the, uh, uh, is the precursor to value exchange. And so one, one of the key things is I think they just, they haven't got enough digital knowledge uh, in the regulators, uh, if, if, for example, if you've got a chief digital officer, you've lost it already because Google, Facebook, Amazon don't have chief digital officers because they're digital native businesses. And I think there's a we need to work with our regulators uh, to un to really help them understand what being digital means. And that's a mindset change. It's a board level change as well. And and it's uh, about how do we get people who are brought up in a totally non-technical society, which is a legal profession, uh, to be highly digital people. And it's achievable, but it's not instant. And because they're also dealing with uh, protecting consumers uh, and, uh, and, and don't feel comfortable because they don't understand the, what digital really means, uh, they revert to uh, what they know is safe. And so it's totally understandable there. And I think as an industry, we need to help uh, work with the regulators to, to, to make that shift of mindset. Some are. Uh, MAS in Singapore is very forward thinking. Uh, the FCA, to an extent, is very forward thinking. They've got different issues. But uh, I think the US is probably the, the regulation that's like 20 years behind everybody else. And so there are some forward thinking uh, regulations and regulators uh, that are, are, are starting to move the needle. But it, it's not going to be fast at all. I think COVID helped, uh, say, in the Philippines and Indonesia, where people, there wasn't really a digital banking sort of set up and everything had to be done on paper. Uh, COVID said, well, people can't get their money out and can't open bank accounts. Ergo, we have to change legislation. They did change the regulation to allow digital banking to work, and it massively took off in the Philippines, for example. And so it, COVID, bizarre enough, has driven some good change and driven towards digital mindset. And so it's, it's a digital mindset thing. And uh, I, I just appeal to everybody, if you're talking to the regulator, help them understand, invite them to API days. <laughs> okay. we, we try, we try. We actually, we have a, we, we focus on, on some regulation. We do dedicated workshops uh, for regulators. So yeah, we, we're doing our part of the job, but it, it, it's hard, it's, it takes time. <laughs> yeah, Nigel, uh, we have one minute left. If you have any, a comment that we did not address, yeah. one big idea you want to share, what, what it would be? So uh, one of the things, we always refer to banking as a service, 
and, and things. Uh, our observation is nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I want to buy some banking as a service or some issuer processing or some card processing or some uh, card fulfillment. Uh, our, look in the mindset of a CEO uh, of, I say, a retail brand or even a fintech. They wake up and say, I want to give an amazing experience to my consumers that does X, Y, and Z and solves this problem for them. And so uh, we have started to uh, ban the word banking as a service and everything in Rails Bank and really focus on what's the value our customers give to their consumers, which is about giving them uh, highly relevant financial experiences and the tools and the APIs to allow them to deliver that. And then it changes the mindset of banking as a service, uh, nobody buys it. And if you go to your grandmother, uh, if she was alive and stuff, or my grandmother, she was alive and say, I, I just think this is amazing stuff, bank is a service, even fintech, and they just wouldn't have a clue because nobody buys fintech either. They, the fintech's just an industry term. So I think as an industry, we've got to start thinking more consumer and not be thinking about terminology that we all get excited about and nobody actually really cares about. If you look at the ultimate person whose who's checkbook and, and money flows through to the customer and then flows through to us. And yeah, and, and it reminds uh, me, the book Blue Ocean Strategy, where they say that this <laughs> drilling company, this drilling company was actually uh, underperforming, but when they understood that they were not selling drills, but holes, yes, they, yeah. they begin to speak exactly. about holes to <laughs> users and what kind of hole do you want to put in that material, whatever. Oh, we have the drills to that. And they don't even want to buy drill, they want to buy holes. And it yeah. also changed their mind. So banking as a service is what maybe we say to investors or industry people, but end users weren't experiences. That happened to be possible thanks to banking as a service. But that's another discussion. Absolutely. But yeah, that's the you. thought. The, the, that's the leaving thought. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thank that, you very that, much, Nigel, uh, for this leaving thought.